This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Edward's Royal Class FW190A8, Rebel's Big Gato Class Sub, Tan Model's RF84, Italeri's Statue of Liberty and the Parthenon, and a quick look at metal details for MPC's Big Eagle. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video report where we crack open the latest kits and tell you why you need them. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. First up today, we have the latest Royal Class offering from Edward, the 172nd scale FW190A8. This kit gives you everything you need to build four, count them, four Vergers, and has some premiums not available elsewhere. Alongside Messerschmitt's BF-109, the FW-190 formed the backbone of the Luftwaffe's fighter fleet. The radial engine-powered version entered service in 1941. It was pretty fast and deadly. Edward's plastic captures the shape of the 190 very well. Finely engraved panel lines and rivets mark the fuselage and wings. Five main airframe sprues are provided and give two fuselage styles. Note the difference in the panel lines. Two types of upper wing and three lower wings account for differences in wing armament. Note the contrast in the spent shell chutes and cannon bulges. Rudders and ailerons are separate, but the flaps and elevators are molded in place. Unused forward fuselage panels indicate other versions are forthcoming. The detailed cockpit includes a tub with turtle deck, seat, joystick, and side consoles. Colored photo etch supplies instrument panels, harnesses, pedals, and other details. The main wheel well is equally detailed with spar and structural components. Nicely molded detail marks the inside faces of the gear doors. Optional clear parts supply flat or blown canopies. Both are available closed or open. The latter pinch in slightly, just as on the full-size airplane. Engine detail is limited to the molded plate, but the tightly fitted cowl and the cooling fan make it largely invisible. If you want more detail up front in the cockpit or in the gun base, Edward has a ton of brass and photo etch already available. The Royal Class box contains four each of two of the sets. There are photo etched brass landing flaps. Beautifully detailed, they'll require surgery to install. Also included are eight pairs of resin main wheels with crisp tread and hub detail. Pre-cut masks ease painting. Cartograph decals give markings for a staggering 12 aircraft, many with colorful fuselage bands and unit insignia. Separate sheets provide comprehensive stenciling. That's a lot already, but it wouldn't be a Royal Class kit without more. First is a chunk of metal from a crashed FW-190 on a nice display stand and a certificate of authenticity. And then there's this delightful beer glass with an FW-190 unit emblem. With the beautiful 172nd scale FW-190 at its core, Edward's Royal Class kit should prove to be a popular build. Cheers. Next up is a reissue that'll be welcomed by submarine fans, the 172nd scale Gato. The first major American class of submarines of World War II, Gatos served mostly in the Pacific starting in 1942. More than 75 were built. This is a big model, 52 inches long, and a big part of the box is taken up with the hull halves marked by raised weld seams. Internal braces keep everything aligned. The bow and stern are separate and both sandwich internal details that can be seen through limber holes and torpedo tubes. Propulsion parts like the screws, shafts, and guards look terrific. The heavy deck sections have planking and non-skid molded on. The sail features molded hatches and rivets as well as the gun decks. The 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and 4 inch guns are nicely molded. As are small parts like railings, ladders, and hatches. And the cable stanchions, davits, and locker doors. Clear parts provide running lights and gun sights. Preformed wire is used for crew steps and thread connects the stanchions. A stand supports the massive model. Decals provide hull numbers and nameplate labels for the USS Albacore and USS Drum. Both are in measure 32-355B camouflage. National and signal flags are also included. There's a lot in this box to sink your teeth into. Next, from Turkish newcomer Tan Model, a state-of-the-art 148 scale RF-84F. Known as the Thunder Flash, this was the photo recon variant of the F-84 Thunder Flash. More than 700 of the swept wing planes were built and they served with the U.S. Air Force as well as many NATO nations. The warm gray plastic parts show exquisite recessed panel lines and rivets. The cockpit includes a five-part ejection seat, joystick, pedals, and beautifully molded instrument panel and side consoles. Short intakes extend to the front of the engine. At the end of the long jet pipe, there's detail, but you'll need a flashlight to see it. 
The intake lips and exhaust ring are each single pieces, which eliminates awkward seam filling. The nose is filled with cameras with bodies and clear lenses. Some of this detail will be visible through the viewports, or you can cut open the access hatches. All of the control surfaces are separate, so should be posable. Detailed gear and speed brake bays finish the detail. Separate tires make painting straightforward. Optional parts allow the canopy to be posed open or closed. The windscreen is separated along panel lines. Pylons with sway braces carry two sizes of fuel tank. Decals mark nine thunder flashes. There are two American, one from the U.S. Air Force in Europe, the other with the Michigan Air National Guard. There are two French and one each Turkish, Italian, German, Dutch, and Greek. Four view color diagrams along with in-action photos are supplied in a nifty book. The instructions are terrific. Clear color diagrams show part placement and color callouts. There's even a display base that can double as a mouse pad. The Thunder Flash is an impressive offering from Tan Model, their first 148th scale kit. I can't wait to see what's next. Building on this show's terrific start, did you see what I did there? We have a couple of interesting architectural models from Italy. Designed to be educational and fun, the Statue of Liberty and the Parthenon replicate landmarks in pre-colored snap-together plastic. The Statue of Liberty comprises 11 parts, including the 11-point star of Fort Wood and the pedestal. Those parts have bricks and other details. Lady Liberty herself is molded in mint green plastic with a separate crown. The Parthenon is larger and more complex with more than 200 parts to build the Temple of Athena as it was in 348 BC. Dozens of columns support the structure and roof. Sharp molding on relief friezes, ceiling panels, and doors looks great and should be a blast to paint. At the heart of the temple is a statue of Athena. A pair of tiny figures add a sense of scale. The instruction books from both kits include detailed painting instructions and historical info. These kits look terrific, should build up quickly, and should look even better painted. Perfect for school projects or as an educational introduction to the fun of modeling. Before we go, I thought I'd take a moment to show you the aluminum detail parts for MPC's big Space 1999 Eagle that we introduced a couple of episodes back. These aluminum parts are gorgeous. First, we have the deluxe accessory set, which includes four large engine bells to replace the main engines. Eight VTOL bells for the underside of the ship and passenger pod. And four oleo struts for the landing gear. The other set, small metal parts, includes 16 tiny RCS thrusters. These drop-in parts replace the kit's plastic parts and probably won't need to be painted. Look for reviews of Edward's Profipack FW190, The Thunder Flash, and Lady Liberty in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And look for more new products in the March issue, on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. Happy modeling. Marked by Ray's Weld Seam. <laughs> Weld Seams. Welp. It's 50 shades of gray in submarine. You do want to go see that movie. No, I do not. <laughs> I, do. I have no desire. <laughs>